this is a US meal quick serve six man dinner module, menu two. Now weighing in at eight pounds, eight ounces, and containing 7,200 calories, this ration was designed to contribute to maximum mobility by supplying a simplified method of hot meals to disperse troops over extended periods without refrigeration, special food prep, or trained service personnel. So without further ado, let's give it a look. All right, so right off the bat, we have a information sheet. Look at that. Pause is needed. Cool. Look at this thing. Wow. There's your little razor. Kenworth Butler, Wisconsin. So... There you go. That's how it works. Thing is razor sharp and immaculate condition too. Whoa, look at that, trays. Nice, you get six of them with little spoons and cute little knives. I mean, look at those things. That is awesome. And then two soluble tea products just randomly thrown in there. So let's Get this out of this box here. Look at that. Aluminum case. So, let's check out the goods. Nice little ding on the corner of this aluminum container. Whoa, look at that. All right, so where do I start? This looks like a main course right here. Yeah, spaghetti with meat and tomato sauce. That's probably still perfectly fine. It's freeze dried. Look at this, accessories. There are probably cigarettes in here. Yeah, they're, I'm pretty sure I feel a cigarette pack. That's always cool. Look at that, it just says accessories. That's just an extremely rare, this ration, was never adopted. It was very well received. Soldiers loved it during training, testing, and whatnot, but it was never mass produced. There's another one. You probably get six accessory packets. Chicken rice soup. Nice. Butterscotch pudding. There's another accessory packet. Fourth one. Hello, cups. Like, you get six trays and six cups myra glaze for hot drinks just i i love stuff like this this is what i live for right here and then here is just an unlabeled box we'll find out what this is real quick look at that that is white bread Canned white bread, that's probably fine. With a P38 can opener right on the top. Fifth accessory packet. Look at this thing. That's just an unlabeled, looks like an accessory packet, but it's like five times the weight. No idea what that is. And here's the sixth accessory packet. Paper towels. Look at these. You get three spatulas. They're pretty sturdy too. Nothing has broken down. I mean, this, this whole ration might be edible still. Oh, look, I probably spoke too soon. Jelly. This looks like it's gone through the ringer. Oh, uh, well, maybe some of them are still good. That'd be nice. Yeah, look at that. There's still, there's quite a few in there. You get quite a bit of jelly. You get some recrystallization and leakage. But, so far, only like a partial casualty there in food storage. Military spread. Oh, this is, this is just the neatest thing in the world, this ration, so far. Look at this, that's like, 
This just reminds me of, like space food or something. It smells like something from, oh, that reminds me of something from when I was a little kid. This smells like something from my old elementary school after the janitor would clean the floor. Oh, I don't know. I can't describe it. It just smells like plastic and chemicals and I don't know. I, I gotta look at this real quick. Look at that. That's some straight up, like, margarine. And it's like open down here. That's a nice squishy sound to it. That's not very appealing. But military spread. I mean, this is the only time you'll ever see that. I don't know. It does not smell like butter. That's just like margarine that just can't go old. That just definitely has a lot to say for what it is. This thing doesn't seem very safe, you know? It just doesn't, but gotta use it. It is very sharp and precise. I like this little thing. So the chicken rice soup. That just smells like some really old cardboard right there. And, well, it's in a aluminum packaging and I don't know we're gonna check it out we're definitely gonna try everything out well everything that's at least somewhat edible looking or tasting smelling what have you this is one of the most fascinating things I've ever found in my life it's just you can't beat this this one butterscotch pudding look at that Kind of scared it's gonna open up from the bottom or something. I better set that back in there. Looks like it opens up fairly easily. You know, this thing came in a 25 man version, six man, and two man. So, the spaghetti with meat and tomato sauce. Back during this era, this was the beginning of freeze drying, and they would actually freeze dry all the components separately. Now it suggests to heat water in this container, but it's aluminum. I'm just not too keen on that, so. So I'm just gonna let it be. All right, so now it's time to check out this mystery packet here, which says coconut bar on the list. I'm guessing that's what this is. Wow, that smells just like some slightly foul coconut bars, but not too bad, just Kind of bad. It's not the best smelling thing in the world. You can kind of smell coconut and chocolate and then like a weird waxy chemical rancidity. Actually, I want to open up this pack of trays. That'd be nice. Why do you only get two soluble tea products in this whole thing? And they're chunked out. Like they don't even feel like they're still good, which is, well this one's fine. The other one's not. Right on. So you get six trays, I can assume, yes. And they're like a thick cardboard or some sort of fiberboard type deal. It's not styrofoam. Cool. Look at those little knives. They look like something out of a little kid's toy thing. You know, like playing house. And you got these like, I don't know, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that, like as if I know from experience, but um, they really do look like little kids knives or something, like just, they're tough and they have the serrations, so not much of a kid's toy. They're decent cutlery. So now the accessory packet. Can't wait to see what this is looking like. What kind of cigarettes? Viceroy? Whoa. Actually, I think it's Viceroy. Okay, Wrigley's PK. That's, oh wait, I didn't even smell. Oh, that is different. You know, these accessory packets always have such a nice, interesting, kind of nostalgic, vintage smell. There's nothing quite like it. But this one's a little different. What's the deal with that? I don't know. Whoa, are these gun cleaning patches? You get three cleaning patches for your weapon. This is definitely one of the funnest things ever. Okay, dry cream product. I'm sorry guys, I always get so excited with this stuff. Coffee Instant Classic. Salt Cafe Manufacturing Corporation. Jamaica 33, New York. 
Let's see if these are DD Bean. Doesn't even say. Classic matches. They're probably the quality kind that you can just glide your match over the striker. Sugar granulated Van Brode milling. That's the same company that packed this thing. And some toilet paper. Classic. People have asked me, have I ever tested this toilet paper out? Is it good? Yes, it's good. The old toilet paper, I actually think it's great. So that's everything right there. All right, so let's get this out onto some trays. Nice. Okay, so let's first start off with, well, I'd have to say probably that spaghetti. This, you use two and a half canteen cups of water to fully rehydrate it. Wow, I can smell that spaghetti sauce. It smells good. Spaghetti and meat sauce. That's still perfectly fine. From the looks of it, at least. This is like one big, whoa, one big weird season block. And, wow, well, I'm going to still try it out. Can't say no to some 56-year-old spaghetti when it's still looking halfway decent. So two and a half canteen cups. I hope this doesn't make a total soup fest. If it does, no big deal. I'm just going to follow the instructions as instructed. Two. Gosh, that just seems like too much, you know? But they're telling you two and a half canteen cups. You know, I think I'm going to leave it at that for just a minute. Because, gosh, that feels super filled up. And if I fill it up any more, I feel like it's just going to burst. And you can always add more as need be. Let's, um, let's check out the chicken rice soup, which calls for two canteen cups. You know, I think for just various purposes, I'm going to set this into a pot, let it rehydrate. I can't let it sit in that plastic and metal bag. That's just weird. And Fair enough. That got most of it. Ooh, this old pot of spaghetti, just like mama used to make it. So, while that's doing its thing, we can move right over to the soup. And, well, oh, that smells like fish. What's up with that? Here, look at, look at this soup. Just hanging out in there, wondering what's going on. Yeah, oh, it just smells like just some really weird fish. And not the good kind. Let's just tear this open and I'm going to get this into a canteen cup. It says it, call, it calls for two canteen cups. Actually, I got a great idea. Gosh, those are some really weird old pieces of dark meat chicken. Oh, I'm probably not going to prepare this entire portion. kind of just feel like doing a canteen cup. That's, that's approximately half of it. Let's get a little bit more rice and that. Goodness gracious. I'm going to hold off on the whole portion. It's just, for now, we're just going to... And I'm just going to set, whoa, knocking over cups. Oh, speaking of cup, look at this. Cool little cup right there. From one canteen cup to another. We can go ahead and check out some coffee. I really could use some right about now. Coffee instant. I'm going to skip the creamer and sugar dry cream product. It's old dry milk. And I'm just not into it. Plus coffee instant's best, just without cream or sugar. Oh yeah, the paper towels. It's pretty tough and robust. 
Definitely not good for wiping. Good thing they give you toilet paper because that is just some straight up paper. You could draw with a crayon on this thing practically. It feels so much like just paper. Might as well use the handle they give you. Kind of a sketchy little handle, but they were they were trying. That tastes like some good quality old school coffee instant. Definitely tastes normal. I'm gonna save the soluble tea product for in the middle of the meal. I'm not gonna make two hot drinks and let them get cold. So this right here, you know the P38. I really want to leave this as is and open it with another P38. Just gonna have to preserve the can and for presentation purposes because this thing if it's going to be on display the old cardboard boxes everything most of this ration can be retained for display after being opened and that's a real plus nice hiss It smells pretty fruity and yeasty, but it smells good. I don't know. That's oh, but it's not. Bummer. That's black mold. Oh, and I just smelled that. It's like that's not cool. Jeez, what am I gonna do with that? I thought I was gonna have bread. Well, I'm not eating any of that. No joke. What? Gosh, Brock breathing some black mold like that. That's always a class act. Yeah, you know, sometimes I gotta be careful with this stuff. That's black mold and super deadly. I'm actually gonna get this out of here in a minute. And it just looks so fine. I mean, if it weren't for that piece, you could probably eat around it at some point. You know, like, if I was starving to death, I wouldn't care. I would eat around that thing. Well, that's a bummer. You know, actually, real quick, I need to... I need to stir this. Whoa. That makes a real sound. Bon appetit. I mean, it's actually not too bad. And it smells pretty good. It's definitely rehydrating over there. Oh, that is good. This is fantastic. The noodles remind me of like some sort of easy mac noodles, you know, like, I don't know, like, like mac and cheese noodles. They're like soft and kind of squishy. Oh man, that is so cool. I got a big old pot of spaghetti. This is spaghetti for six soldiers. I mean, it's a lot of food. I'm not adding the other canteen cup and make it too watery. That beef is good. Is that the oldest meat I've ever eaten? It probably is, or close to it. I don't know. When you have to ask yourself that question, that's you're definitely leading a strange life. But hmm, it's well seasoned. Some garlic, onion. It's really salty and savory. I mean, I don't know if the flavor is enhanced with MSG or not, which doesn't matter unless you have an allergy to it. But it's so bursting with flavor. Getting fancy. Nice heaping portion of 56-year-old spaghetti and meat sauce. You know, I would have figured the bread to be fine. I've had bread four years older than that. Canned bread from that five-in-one. And it was still fine. It makes me realize that that was some risky business. Because this thing, this thing was well stored. Hmm. That's good stuff. This... It's so weird. Look, okay, we gotta put this on a spoon real quick. Look at that. That does not seem edible. Oh, and it's not at all. Oh, that's like plastic straight up. Mm, I'm not eating that. That has absorbed the plastic. Or maybe it always tasted like that, but 
What a terrible invention if it was. Sorry. There's just some things I draw the line on, and that's one of them. So here's the soup with chicken. Um, I don't like the way that smells. The spaghetti still smells good, but this... Huh. Well, hold on. Maybe it's okay. Let's try some rice first. I'm being wimpy. Okay, the chicken, weird texture to it. Like, sorry. Um, that's a really savory. I mean, the chicken is great. Like, considering that it's not like little teeny chunks. It smells like it came off the dock, which is not normal for chicken. Why am I eating this? I don't know about that. The rice rehydrated well. Very savory. Chicken broth, chicken rice soup. I'm going to go back to some of this. Hmm. This is quality. This spaghetti with meat sauce. The spaghetti is more like these weird little hollow noodles that you can like literally breathe through. What a fascinating meal. I will say. Brings me to, well, on Actually. Yeah, this, the jelly. Ooh. I don't even know what flavor that is. Oh, that's like burning my throat. Is that fermented? Um, I don't know about that. That's, I think, grape jelly that maybe it's apple and just gotten really dark. It's fermented. It's still edible, but I'm not going to eat it. I mean, maybe just this one last bite. Here we go. For the clean spoon's sake, I have to wash it down with some classic coffee instant. And that is the Salt Cafe. That was always a good brand, good company for coffee instant. The coconut bar. And then we'll move over to some dessert. Oh, it smells terrible. Yeah, it's not edible. I always call it fudge, and I mean, it never says fudge. I just call it that. Just coconut. And look at it. Let's take a little bite. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, wait. On the way down, well, it's leaving a residual film. I might need to take a, a little nibble. The coconut part is great, which is so much softer than any other time I've had it. Hmm, that's not too bad. There's a nice little chemical flavor to it. 56 year old spaghetti and meat sauce. And it's still decent. The wonder of freeze dried food. So when you're buying that canned mountain house, you know, like those big portions of it, and they say it'll last for like 30 or 40 years, you can guarantee it'll last for like 50. In some sketchy bag, I mean, not even vacuum sealed. It's delicious. When they say two and a half, canteen cups it would have made it too watery this is perfect right here but i guess for six men to portion it out they need to stretch it out this is probably like for four guys or something or just a smaller portion that tastes better the coconut fudge bar you just can't chew it for long because it'll start to get worse Wait, that bite tasted better. I don't understand that. That I don't know. No, it's sneaking up on me now. I need coffee. It's the phases of flavor. It's very deceiving. Those fudge bars, I just call them fudge bars. It just says coconut, but it's it's fudge. I mean, look at this. It's, it's so squishy and 
Ooh. It's fudge. But, hold on. I like the coconut center. I think I just got some of the chocolate though. Oh man. That coffee in this little cup. I mean, look at this cup. That is bordering Art Deco. Dixie, Myra Glaze for hot drinks. I'm not wasting any of this spaghetti. At least not on this tray. That over there, well, I'll see how I feel after tonight, but I'm going to put it in the fridge and if it's still good, you know, like if I'm okay tomorrow, I'm sure I will be. That means like 90% chance all that spaghetti is going to get eaten. It tastes like there's dried cheese in it. Like a little bit of like grated Parmesan. Garlic, onion. This sauce is so good. It's exceptionally savory. This is better than spaghetti and meat sauce out of LRPs. And like I mentioned before, they made a 25, 6 man, and a 2 man version of this ration. The 2 man was the direct forerunner for the food packet long range patrol. So this thing, this is definitely a transitional ration. This here, I don't know, like, which, which spoon is normal still? Okay, this one's good. That's right. Which spoon is normal? None of these spoons are normal. I mean, look at this spoon. Let's see if this got any better. Nope. Not in the slightest. That literally tastes so fishy. Like, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, I'm going to clear some of this off. Then we're going to have some dessert. All right, now we're back with dessert and that soluble tea product. Grab that coffee instant out of the other accessory pack that I opened up. Gotta have coffee with your cigarette. Okay, so now, that pudding. I'm curious to see if that dried milk is going to smell bad or not. That's actually kind of easy for me to detect by this point. It really, when old dried milk smells like cheese and it's turned yellow, well, this is going to be butterscotch, so that'll be kind of hard to spot, the color aspect, but the smell, oh, it just smells like butterscotch, so I don't know. We'll see. There's some pack inside of it. This must be the dried milk, and might have to pass on the dried milk aspect. Set that there. Okay, so this, I don't know which one's which. It all smells like butterscotch. Look at this weird little bag it comes in. It's like a strange, extremely soft, and but very tough feeling plastic. And there's like loose pudding down the bottom. This part, it literally just looks like an accessory packet, but with something not nearly as cool. So what's this going to be smelling like and looking like? Oh, it smells like old dry milk. And I just keep smelling it. Why am I doing that? Okay. I'm just going to try out a tad bit. It tastes pretty off. That's a shame. I'm not really sure what to do with it. I just kind of want to mix the butterscotch part and skip the dry milk. I'm not exactly sure how well that'll prepare. Let's try this out on its own. This will probably taste good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think I'm just going to mix that on its own. No point in ruining a good thing here. I mean, it's kind of like already ruined if the 
dried milk part's no good, but this tastes stale, foul, and industrial. I'm gonna take warm water and mix this up. Yeah, it's just gonna turn into like a syrup. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. Yeah, that's like butterscotch syrup. I'm gonna try this out. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. So the deal is, this is a syrup. I'm pouring it out, and the thing is, this is pudding enough without the the sickening part. I'm not getting sick. I got a good track record right now. I follow my senses, and I'm probably lucky might have pretty good intestinal flora by this point. I want to get that last little bit out of there because this is $700 butterscotch syrup. Yeah, it's pretty clumpy and I guess I could have whipped it a little bit more. I'd be stirring all day. Look at that stuff. I'm really kind of happy that they separated the dried milk from the actual butterscotch syrup part because, you know, for any sort of long-term, I mean, ultra long-term storage that makes sense you can have canned dried milk if it's like vacuum sealed gas sealed can what have you it can last like 30 years if properly stored but hmm that is delicious this here is just a nice mild butterscotch kind of caramel like when it says butterscotch it has a buttery kind of flavor a sweet buttery hmm, caramel syrup that is incredible and it's pretty old too I just find that fascinating. When you find, I mean, I actually kind of like these little clumps, but yeah, when you find a dessert that's not off in any sort of way, well, the milk part was off, but look at that nice little jiggle to it. That's always a sight for sore eyes. Hmm. Butterscotch syrup. I mean, that's pretty much what it is now. See how it goes with some unsweet tea. You know, this tea on its own, oddly enough, it's boring. I could add dry cream product. It has light cream, skim milk, lactose, and calcium phosphate. I'm skipping that. It could be fine, but I had canned dry milk from a five-in-one small detachment that was perfectly fine. It was totally white. There was no yellowing. That's, see, canned dry milk. It's like canned peanut butter. It lasts forever, I'm pretty sure, but when it's in some bag or packet or something, it doesn't work. It's just a totally different story. You know, it could be a plastic foil line pack that's sealed. If there's air in it and, you know, it's just kind of stagnating, it's not going to last. Yeah, that's so much better. It kind of brings out that nice caramel undertone to it. It's just a nice instant kind of like Nest Tea kind of deal. And it is Nestle Company. Look at these clumps. That's enjoyable. You get these little flavor bursts. That has the consistency of some kind of thin pudding. If I filled up the pouch with like 25% water, this would have been pretty much like pudding on its own. The granular clumps, they have like a squishy outer part. You bite it, it's like a membrane. And then you have the actual butterscotch syrup part. I don't know, I like it. I'm about ready for that cigarette though. All right, and I'm pretty much finished with the strange old butterscotch syrup pudding stuff and moving over to the grand finale here. Got these Viceroy cigarettes, filter tip, made in the USA. Deep weave filter. For smooth taste, Viceroy's got it at both ends. Got the filter, got the blend. Deep cured tobacco for richer taste. U.S. tax exempt for use outside U.S. Not bad. This smells pretty minty. It's probably from that Wrigley's PK. Sitting in there for all those years. Oh, there we go. Reminds me of the smell of gardenias. It's kind of like those Lucky Strikes I had last year in an MCI.
These have a great smell to them. Very light flavor on a dry pole, just like a really mild tobacco. That's super light. Wow. That's incredibly smooth. It's like a perfect cigarette. That's extremely enjoyable. Right here is one of my personal favorites of the um, ration cigarettes so far. It's like the smoothest cigarette I've ever had. This really is. This is no joke. It's, it's almost like a light, potentially even an ultralight cigarette, at least to my standards. I mean, smoking these unfiltered lately. It's not too dry either. That's a plus. Oh yeah, and I feel it already. That's a strong nicotine buzz. You know, it's the these old smokes every time goes hand in hand with coffee instant. Viceroy. I'd never even heard of this cigarette before. I don't know if it's still produced to this day. If it is, I've never seen it on the US market. It might be in Europe, something like that. Maybe in Canada, but never seen them here. Now this ration really reminds me of the modern unitized group ration. I mean, it has trays. They're like a little mobile field kitchen. But, wow. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a nicotine buzz, but not nearly as strong as some of these. This is the most mild of all the ration cigarettes I've had. So, this was the predecessor to the long-range patrol ration. And you know, none of these were used in any major conflicts. Actually, it was deemed unnecessary by the DOD, and um, even though it was well-received by troops, everybody liked them. And I mean, the freeze-dried food had to have tasted better than the MCI. It was just bulky and not very practical. And in 1964, the food pack at Long Range Patrol was officially put in the service and that was used all throughout Vietnam is still used to this day that ration has been around for 54 years I've never seen pictures of a two-man or 25-man meal quick serve there's only one stock photo out there of this six-man meal quick serve it's definitely worth reviewing it would be slipping through the cracks otherwise and enough of these get opened up off camera and whatnot and no one would ever know what they are so definitely a great find a nice and smooth vice with Viceroy good to the last draw too gonna finish it off with that ultimate palate cleansing Wrigley's PK We'll see if this is hard as a rock and brittly on the bite or if it bites right in with a nice chew. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Wrigley's PK has the strongest all-natural peppermint flavor to it. Some of the better gum that you could ever chew. They just don't make gum like this anymore. You can't get such a natural flavor. Oh yeah, and that toilet paper, I'm not going to test it on camera here but I am going to show you what it's looking like it really has that toilet paper look to it kind of rolled up like that always has that minty fresh smell to it sitting in that accessory packet with the gum the cigarettes always get that smell and it's not the best feeling toilet paper it's just I mean when they say toilet paper it really feels like paper they give you 20 real small slices. It's always doubled, but you can you sit there and peel each one. There's 20, and each one of these accessory packets 
It's all the same cigarette, Spice Roy's. What a fascinating ration. The whole thing is still in great shape for display. Well, this was a meal quick serve six man dinner module. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989 off MRE Info. Hope you liked the video, and I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.